Hello, this is Michael Osborne with Webucator. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to generate and verify expiring links. Now, this video is based on a blog entry by Rush Frisbee. Rush agreed to let us create this video discussing his article, which is available on his blog at the URL shown here. So when I say expiring links, what I mean by that is a link that expires in a set period of time. Now traditionally the way we would approach this is we would use something like a database lookup to verify whether the link was still valid or not. But that was kind of a heavy handed approach. There was a lot of overhead involved there. So what we want is an easy way to essentially put in expiration information into the link but we want to make sure that the user cannot manipulate that information. So we're going to need some way to encrypt it. And then we also need a method to verify whether the user has attempted to modify this in any way and thus make the link invalid. So let's take a look at the solution that Rush came up with. We're going to go into Visual Studio. And in order to approach this problem, the first thing we're going to need is something in the model to basically hold our expiration date. So you'll notice here I have a model defined. This is a class expires model, and it contains a public date time expires on property and also a string token property. Now the next thing we're going to need is a way to generate a token. So you'll notice here we have a token helper class. And in the token helper class, we've got a private string called hash key, which is a constant. We're just throwing, in this case, the string secret in there. This is the, the secret we're going to use to do our hashing or encrypting. We then have two methods. We have a get token method and an is valid token method. Now, what the get token method does is it will essentially return the result of a call to this crypto class using the hash SHA512, passing in the string dot format, the hash key, and the models expires on dot tick. Now, in order to understand this, we need to take a look at the crypto class real quick. The crypto class is really nothing more than a simple helper class, which contains a number of different implementations. So, for example, for SHA, you will notice we have a hash SHA1, hash SHA256, hash SHA384, hash SHA512 method. So various methods for doing SHA hashes. And you'll notice we also have here implementations for MD5, uh, AES, 3DES, and some other helpers and so forth. So this is really just a helper class to do our encryption for us. So back in our token helper, essentially all we're doing is we're calling this class and hashing the key the secret, if you will, and the expires on dot ticks. Now the second method here is valid token, very straightforward. It simply receives a model object and then it makes a call to the get token passing in that model and returns that model token. This is how we validate that in fact it is still a valid token before we do our date time comparisons. In other words, we ensure that the token has not been tampered with, the data has not been tampered with. Now this really is the heart of the implementation. The rest of what you're going to see is mostly just uh, GUI code to present the information. So let's step through, first of all, our home controller here. In our home controller, you'll notice we have two actions. We've got an index and a check action. And in the index action, what we're doing is we're creating a new instance of the expires model. We're setting it is, its expires on property to the current date time plus 30 seconds. And then we set the model token to the call to the token helper class, get token, passing in that model, and we simply return the view with the model. In the check side, basically what we do, you'll notice in the check we receive a long date data and a string token. So we declare a model, an instance of the model. We set the expires on to the date data from binary that was passed in. So we do a date time from binary passing in date data. And then we set the model.token equals the token. And then we check to make sure that it's valid. If the token helper is not valid, we will simply say invalid. Otherwise, if the expires on of the model is greater than the current date time, we will say this is still good and expires in a certain amount of time. Otherwise, we will say it is not good and we will specify when it expired. 
So at this point, we've got the code to generate and to verify the links. We have the controller defined. The only really remaining part of the puzzle is the views. So let's take a look at a couple of views real quick. We have an index view. And you'll notice in our index view, we do a URL.action call. And we pass in a new instance of date data equals model dot expires on dot two binary and the token. Also, over in our check side, we use an HTML action link. And essentially, all this does is it generates another link of, of type index, which again has the expiration time in it. So very simple, very straightforward. We're going to generate a link in the index. We're going to check it in the check side. So let's test all this out. We're going to go to the index, and we're going to view this in Internet Explorer. And it will render the page. And in the page, we have a link. Now, it's only been a couple of seconds, and I know this link will survive for 30 seconds. So I'm going to click Check Now. And you'll see it says it's still good, and it expires in 21 seconds. I could then click this link to generate another link. And now, if I wait 30 seconds and click the link, it will now show me that that link was not good. It expired at 9.15.27. And again, I can generate another link. Now, I know that wasn't 30 seconds. I used a little trick there to kind of speed up the video so you didn't have to sit and twiddle your thumbs for 30 seconds. But trust me, it took 30 seconds to get to that point. Okay, I'd like to again thank Rush Frisbee for the inspiration for this video. Be sure and check out his blog at the URL you see here for other articles related to C-sharp programming and ASP.NET web development. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it.